Okay, these things, side stays. Let's have a talk about these and debunk a massive myth. And that myth is your side stays should break before you fly a hull. This is a massive misconception and to be honest a very dangerous one. So why is having your side stays fail a dangerous thing instead of your boat capsizing? Well, it's pretty simple and pretty easy. Let's, let's compare it to something most people are more familiar with. Let's take your car, for instance. If you're in your car and you're going around a corner too fast and your car is likely to roll over or skid, it's like saying your tires should blow out or the wheels should fall off before you get into danger. It's exactly the same sort of analogy. We are saying that our side stay should break and endanger the boat and the people on board before the hull should fly and capsize. Now do you sort of get what I'm saying? To have a piece of equipment fail to keep you safe is a false sense of security. So why do people say that this is a way to go? And is this an actual thing that a big heavy cruising catamaran will break a stay and lose its rig before it flies a hull? The answer to that unfortunately is yes. And why is this the case? Well, the case is due to writing moment. Okay, we spoke about this in a little in a, a video we did about weight and writing moment and how much writing moment catamarans can produce. And this is directly related to weight. The heavier your boat is, if it's a catamaran, the higher the writing moment's going to be. The higher the writing moment is, the more load capability the platform is able to put into the stays and the standing rigging and the mast of a boat. So in the case of these big heavy multi-hulls, we don't actually design a side stay and a mast to actually take full writing moment because we'd end up with a rig that is so enormously out of this world huge that it's completely impractical and it's very costly and the chances of these boats getting to this situation is is very unlikely so it brings and begs the question of what's right and what's correct. We keep hearing this banded thing about performance boats, flying hulls, and it's a dangerous thing. No, it's not. It's not a dangerous thing. And everyone's saying, oh, if you've got these performance boats, the rigs should fail and fall down. No, they shouldn't. That's a more dangerous situation. The ability for a boat to fly a hull and capsize is there in every boat except obviously these big heavy boats that don't and the rigs fail and produce a different danger for these boats that can fly a hull the managing of flying a hull is a lot easier and a lot safer than trying to manage a load in a stay to not break when you're sailing a cat it is way way easier to look around at the environment and see if you are overpowered to see if the boat is starting to get light on its feet you know first thing we look at is uh, is the windward transom starting to come clear of the water 
if that's the case, we know that we're well wicked up and we should reduce sail. It comes down to the sailor being responsible for their boat and responsible in their sailing manner not to turn it upside down, not to fly the hull. Is flying a hull a dangerous thing in con controlled situations? No, it's not at all. We see gunboats and HH-66s and these big cats flying hulls from time to time and people say it's reckless. No, it's not. It's a managed environment. Do these boats sometimes go upside down? Yes, they do. That is because they are racing and they are pushing the limits. The same way you would see a Formula One car going around the racetrack, pushing the limits, it will skid and fall over and crash into whatever it's not supposed to. If we look further at really high performance multi-hulls, off the beach catamarans, these are really high performance catamarans. You look at an A-class catamaran, you look at an F-18, you look at any of those types of boats, you tell me how often they are not flying a hull. They are flying a hull all the time and they are not always going upside down. Yes, the sailor input is higher, but you know, it's, um, it's not a dangerous thing. There is this massive misconception that capsizing a catamaran is the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. Yes, it is a bad situation, but so is dropping your rig. Dropping your rig is every bit as dangerous as it is capsizing the boat. And until you've dropped a rig, those who have dropped a rig would understand this as well, and those who have capsized a catamaran as well also understand that neither situation you want to be in, but one of the situations is easier to control than the other and controlling the situation of not capsizing is way, way, way easier to manage than seeing the load in your rig. There is one piece of equipment that you can use to see the load in your rig. And I can guarantee you more than 98, 99% of the catamarans out there do not have that piece of equipment and that piece of equipment is a load cell in the shrouds and even when you have that it is still dicing with danger that the load in the rig can far exceed and break easier than it is to manage watching how much power you have in the boat to fly a hull and capsize it.